Well, let's consider what is needed to spoof a signal. To spoof a signal, we have to transmit a signal that is stronger than the real signal. But we know that huge antennas are needed to transmit VLF signals. So it would be very hard to spoof VLF signals. Small handheld VLF transmitters exist, but they do not transmit very far and they are relatively weak. So the attacker would need to be very close to the victim, which limits an attacker's ability to spoof a signal. So the last item here, the GPS signals don't work everywhere. So will VLF signals make it into caves or in buildings where GPS signals can't reach? Well, for the ground of 0.01 Siemens per meter, the skin depth we said was 50 meters. So if a tunnel or a cave is shallow enough, let's say there's a tunnel right here, and the signal at the surface was strong enough, the VLF wave could propagate through the ground, we get diffusion through the ground to the, where the cave is, and the signal could be received in the cave. And the same is true for buildings. Additionally, we know that VLF waves can propagate into the ocean, since the US Navy uses VLF waves to communicate with submerged submarines. At 10 kilohertz, the attenuation rate of electromagnetic waves in the ocean is about 3 dB per meter. So it turns out that a VLF signal can be received at a depth of 50 feet at a distance of 8 megameters from a station operating at 10 kilowatts of power. All the way around the Earth is 40 megameters, so this example is given for an 8 megameter propagation distance. So as a result, even submerged submarines could possibly use this backup geolocation system where they can't receive a GPS signal. But with all of these advantages, it's also important to consider any disadvantages. So what is the downside of this system, this geo ground-based geolocation system? Accuracy is the main downside. When it was operational, the Omega system was generally accurate to about 3 to 5 kilom kilometers. Fortunately for our backup system, Accuracy may not be as important as reliability, availability, and robustness. But one question we can consider is, today we have more powerful supercomputers, more knowledge about the ionosphere, and technology in general has advanced since the 1990s. Could we improve the accuracy of the Omega system? That's it for today, and next time we'll start a new design challenge.